My name is Amber Crowder. I went to federal prison because I was charged with mail fraud um, regarding a contract with the federal government. Some of the common misconceptions about life in prison, to me, what I get often, people will always say, oh my God, you don't look like you were incarcerated, right? But what does someone who was incarcerated look like? You know, you get these like, am I gonna have tattoos on my face? You know, am I gonna look like I've been in a couple of scuffles? There is no archetype for someone who was incarcerated. And I think it's important for people to see that normal, everyday people go to prison. So I went to prison already having a degree. They give you the opportunity to get a GED while you're incarcerated, and I think they were offering maybe one to two college coursework classes, but that was it. It was all very disconnected and disjointed. You're not allowed to really take educational courses, and the only way you can even get enrolled into any courses, like a knitting or I think they had like knitting and guitar and different things like that is if you have a short sentence, right? So if you have a 10 year sentence, you're not gonna get to take any classes because they're gonna let the people that are coming in and out that are more transient go first, which to me is a little backwards. Um, but yeah, so to me, prison wasn't beneficial um, for getting any type of degree. I guess if you're in there for a long time, you can, you know, get your certifications in like plumbing or electrician, but that takes, like you have to have at least a 20 year sentence for that even to really transpire. When you come from a federal prison, you are generally mandated to go to a halfway house. Because I got out right when COVID started, like at the end of March of 2020, I was only able to stay in the halfway house maybe two to three days, which was great. And then I was able to go home on ankle monitor, but they didn't give me anything to prepare me to come back. And it was very overwhelming. So I was randomly on Instagram and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was, again, feeling a little overwhelmed. And then the Pivot Program ad pops up and I start looking through it and I was like, oh, this, this looks great. So I, it was like a Saturday and I just applied, not necessarily knowing if anything was gonna come from it. And then that Monday, Professor Miller gave me a call and I started doing the interview process. So the process is one, they wanna see kind of where you are, um, one academically as well, right? Because it is a, a, a program that's kind of rigorous, you know, because it's trying to catch you up to where you need to be in order to be like, you know, really savvy in business and different things like that. So they want you to know some basic math, reading skills, so you have to take some tests. They wanna interview you. You know, also just kind of see where you are mentally. Are you ready to take on this load? Because Pivot doesn't want you to have a job. They want that to be your job. You know, you're going to work essentially 40 hours a week, but it's school. And another thing, just even, you know, checking in with you mentally. Prison can take its toll on you mentally. So coming out, being in a program that has that academic rigor and that has these expectations on you can also be a little difficult. So there are so many collateral consequences that happen when you come out of prison. One, just having a felony, right? In a lot of states, you cannot vote. You cannot even receive public assistance in certain places. So a lot of times having a program like Pivot where it can introduce the person to these companies, to a Deloitte, to an Accenture, right? Whereas these people that are just submitting an application and all you're seeing immediately after you're doing this background check is felon, they're not gonna get as good of a chance as someone that, this is Georgetown University, we are introducing you to this person, we can vouch for this person, we have been able to work with this person, we know what they can do, we know what they're capable of. So to me, the benefit of having this intermediary 
you know, that has such a good name and a longevity in, you know, the education community, in the workspace, just helps to kind of catapult you to a position that you may not have ever gotten had you just applied on your own. So the Bend Down Project is a digital platform that I've created specifically to highlight women who were incarcerated. One of the things that I do is I speak to a lot of women who are being sentenced or who are going to prison or who have just gotten out of prison. And it's really difficult to even find women who are open about being incarcerated. A lot of times they don't want to come forward and talk about their incarceration because of the stigma, because they have children. So I created the Bend Down Project to kind of highlight women who have just come out of prison successfully because it's not an easy task. And just also reaching out to people just, just like myself that didn't know about incarceration or all of the pitfalls that come with it. And so one of the ways I'm reaching them is through my digital platform, The Bend Down Project, where I highlight women who were formerly incarcerated. So whether you are just having a job, whether you're taking care of your children, whether you live on your own, whatever it is that you're doing post-incarceration, I feel like it should be celebrated because it's difficult. It's difficult to maneuver and survive.